Hello, it's me, and I have another puzzle to demonstrate slash solve. This is uh, the Master Rua Cube. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. So this is the Rua Cube over there, over here. Um, this is, uh, I guess you can say it's a three-layer puzzle, because it has three layers here, it appears. And um, I did do a solve of this. It's a lot like a, well, it's a face-turning rhombic dodecahedron, and it uh, actually shaped shifts and it shares a homology with the helicopter cubes. It's a very similar kind of a, a structure to it. If I look at this as the corners and um, these as the centers, so they can do similar types of uh, um, orbital exchanges. Well, anyway, without getting too much into detail with this, I can refer you to the tutorial that I have with this one, is we have the master version. So the thing is, is there's not a lot of guidance out there in terms of how to solve something like this. So the question that people ask me is, how do I come up with algorithms? How do I come up with strat uh, strategies? Just to demonstrate this puzzle over here, this uh, moves really, really well. Um, it's the master version of it, so that means that it's just more layers of this. One, two, and I guess we can look at it as three, four. So what kind of approach would we do? Being the master version of this, you can see that there's a lot more layers to it. There, there's a lot more pieces. So what I could do is maybe reduce this puzzle to this puzzle by just doing slice moves so that this corner is equivalent to all of these. And this corner over here is equivalent to these and this sort of center area is equivalent to all of these. So, you know, that's one way that we could do it. Um, one possibility, like we do with a 4x4, four four, is you can reduce it to a 3x3 three three and solve it as such, or we can reduce it to a 2x2 two two and a parity free solve. So by reducing it this way, is that the most efficient solve? Well, I suspect so. So now it's a question of how to do the reduction, how to move these guys around. So this is where I start experimenting with commutators. And it's really very simple. You just do the kind of moves that it's limited to what it can do. So because of this, if I don't want to shape shift, I'm uh, really limited to uh, 180 degree turns this way and, uh, well, on both ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing maybe a double jumble ma uh, maneuver or a single jumble maneuver, which puts pieces into, well, we'll just see kind of where they go. Uh, now, as I recall, when I did a double jumble maneuver here, turn, turn, and this turns around over here, we bring it back down, and then we do the double jumble portion, so this goes up and down, and this turns and down and up. So as you can see, we swapped these two. These two got swapped and these two got swapped. So this much we know, and these are deep slice moves. Well, it's the only slice move with, with this puzzle. So we can assume that with this guy, it's the same thing. I'll deep slice it down, or up and down. Deep slice it here, down and up. Come back here, turn, and down and up. Oop. Down and up. Oh, let's do this right. Okay, so basically it did swap these guys and you can see, I can now see that these together are equivalent to this piece over here. So let's get it back and uh, the main thing I'm going to demonstrate is how I'm going to come up with algorithms. And it's different for different puzzles, but the concept is really the same. So a commutator is basically where you do two moves and you undo those moves. Like R, U, R, I, U, I. And by doing that, I then isolate and see what pieces are kind of isolated from the rest. And then I do a middle move by moving it within that layer. So here's, here's what I mean. Let's say we try to do, we'll do turn up and turn down. So it's a single jumble maneuver, but I'm just going to go superficial here. Turn and go down and up. Now I know to get it back, I just repeat what I what I did. But let's take a look at what we have. Are there any pieces in any layers that are isolated? Well, what do you think? Um, 
When I say isolated, I mean what was not affected at all, except for one piece. So all of these guys got affected, these guys got swapped. Um, as I'm looking at this layer, notice how this layer is exactly the same. The only thing that got moved is this. So this is an isolated piece right over here. And even in the second layer, this is an isolated piece. So once you find an isolated piece after doing your commutator, in this case it was up, down, and turn. I know I can get it back by doing the same thing. Once you find an isolated piece, then you just do a move to put another piece in its place because I know only this piece is going to be affected. And this piece actually came from down here. So I suspect that this piece, and then when I turn it all the way around, splat. This piece is also going to be affected. So this piece, this piece, and I suspect this piece. So I can kind of anticipate a three cycle of here to here, here to here, here to here perhaps. Uh, well, we'll have to see. Maybe this will go here, this will go here, and this will go here. So, so let's see what happens. I'm going to turn this around, because this was the only piece that was affected, and move this in its place. Now I'm going to undo what I just did. So we're going to go up, down, and then do a superficial 180 over here to get it back, and then go down, up, and then we undo our middle move and turn it around. Okay, so as you can see, the pieces that we thought were in play are in play. So this blue one did indeed go here, this orange one went here, and this pink one went here. So this is progress, because now I have a very simple three cycle. Now because this piece was isolated in this layer, I suspect that these will also three cycle. So let's see what happens. Once again, um, slice it down, uh, up and down, a deep slice. Superficial 180, then I'm just going to call that a deep jumble and a superficial 180. Um, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to just move this layer because that piece is isolated. I'm also going to move this, just for, well, now this will demonstrate it better. Then I'm going to go up, down, and then superficial 180, and then deep, down, up, and now this moves like so. And sure enough, yes, this went to here, this went to here, and this went to here. So you know what this means, of course. This means I now know how to reduce these pieces. I can reduce these pieces because, um, well, because these are part of the same pieces, or sort of equivalent in terms of their position. I don't know how to do this one as of yet. Um, but suffice it to say that I can reduce these. now. Um, the thing about that is there was a specificity a little bit in the location. So it's the one that was uh, towards me, that was the uh, closest to me. So as I'm searching algorithms, now I'm going to do a deep 180 before a superficial because I suspect that the superficial one hit these two, the deep one might hit these two. So it's up down. Now I'm going to do a deep 180, like this, and then down, up. Now I, uh, I can see that the deep not only affects these, but affects these as well. Now I can isolate these, but maybe I can do these, uh, uh, do these now. So I'm going to turn this again, one, two, then up, down, deep, down, up, and one, two. Okay, so you saw what that did. Now this went to here, this went to here, and this went to here. Now you might think, oh, you're not, you, you took both of them out, but that's okay because now I know how to do this one. This one is dragged with it, but that's okay because I can focus on these first and then these next because I can isolate these. Now I suspect the next one will hit this guy. So up, down, we go deep, down, and up. And now I'm just going to move this middle layer here. And then we say up, down, double turn, down, up. And now the middle layer turns. Okay, so that will just affect this one and this one. 
So in my reduction then, what I can do is put these in first and these in next and no problem. So now I figured out a way of reducing these guys. So when it comes to reducing, we have to reduce this, this, and this. So we're a third of the way there. That the deep one gets these two, depending on the layer that I use, and the superficial one gets these two, depending on the layer that I use. Okay, so far so good. Um, but we don't know how to do these guys yet, and we don't know how to do the top one. So what else can we do? I think we've exhausted the whole um, single jumble stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it here, and I'm going to do sort of a variation of the Sunni, I think. Um, I can go superficial or I can go deep, but let's see what happens if I go superficial. So it's we'll go to R, to U, to R, to U, and then to get it back, I know that just go to U, to R, to U, to R. So so let's do that again, but look for a middle move. And that's to R, to U, to R, to U. So what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Well, if I'm just isolating layers, I see this guy, if I take him all the way around, is completely isolated. So this is isolated. So if I were to do a middle move, and that middle move came up like this, I can see that these two are going to participate in an algorithm. And um, this one came from down here, right, when I did my 2R. Which means that I predict this will go here, this will go here, and this will go here. And that's all it should do. So now I'm going to do my middle move, which will move this middle one like so. And then reverse what we just did and do to you, to R, to you, to R, and now I reverse my middle move like this, boom. You see nothing else was affected, but this green went to here, this aqua, I don't know, went to here, and this orange went to here. So that had the effect that I was thinking of. So now I'm working on this reduction here, and I've got these guys. So let's try it again, just for muscle memory, to R, to you, to R, to you, slice this way here with the two R middle move, then finish it up with a to you, to R, to you, to R. Bring this up and uh, good. Now the very next one, this will be into here. This will go here and this will go here. So to R, this is how you remember it to you. To R, to you. This is how I learned it actually. So now you can see this is in my middle move. Then finish it up with to you, to R, to you, to R. Now I, I encourage you to, anytime you have a complex puzzle, maybe there's no tutorial online, this is how I do it. This is how it's done. Okay, now what about these guys? Well, notice that my middle move. My 2R was at the end, and at the end, this was juxtaposing it. This 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U sounds a lot like um, edge swaps, and these are edges. So what I did was I basically just did a three-way edge swap, here to here, here to here, here to here, by doing 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. So what if I do a middle slice instead? I might get these guys in. So I'm just going to go 2R from here to U. 2R, 2U. Okay, so what do we got? Um, well, I see this. This maybe? I have a couple of isolated pieces, but this one seems to be isolated in this layer, which means I'm only going to affect this. So if I turn this, it's going to counteract this one, uh, uh, encounter this one. So I suspect this will go here. This will go, well, here, and this will go here. So let's do my middle move now with a middle slice of 2R, like this, and now I finish it up with 2U, middle 2R, 2U, 
middle to R. And then we undo our middle move over here. And we see that only three were affected. This did indeed go to here, this went to here, and this went to here. So now I know we can reduce these. I, I now have a blueprint in my head to reduce these pieces, you know, these middle pieces here, these guys. And now I can reduce these guys just by putting these in and coordinate it with this center. So let's try that again. 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, middle move this out, then 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, and then middle move it back. Okay, one more should get this orange to here, this other orange to here, and this blue and green to here. Okay, so that's pretty good. All I have left now is to figure out how to reduce these entire corners. Now, some things might not require algorithms, and it occurs to me that these guys can be placed in, and I'm only going to be affecting two, because these edges here can come into each other, and there's only, there's only uh, two that's going to be affected. So I don't even have to worry about a three cycle. I'm not going to worry about the edges because this move here, and I don't care about any of the other pieces, we'll just put two in. And if I can do that, I'll always have two left over, right? I'll never have just one that I have to put in. That doesn't make sense. I'll always have two left over, so I'll always be able to position it. So that's not a worry. The only question is now, I can put these, yeah, I can put these guys in because that was our first algorithm to get this our double jumble stuff. But how do I get these guys in? Well, it doesn't really matter the effects on everything else. As long as it doesn't affect these guys, these edges, it doesn't matter anything else because I can solve all those later. Well, let's take a look at this because this is on the bottom part. If I move this over here, what was on the bottom is now on the top. If I do another slice this way, and again, I'm very limited in my motion here, but if I do another slice this way, and then I move this back to here, and then I move this slice back. So basically, I just did a 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. Um, what had occurred? Well, what occurred is that this pink went to here, this red went to here, and this purple went to here, and that's it. Now these guys moved around as well, but I'm not gonna care about that. I mean, it is another way of moving these, but it's not an isolated movement because it affects these guys. I know how to move these in an isolated way, but now I know how to do a three cycle with these guys. If I can do a three cycle with these guys, it doesn't matter what I do here because I'm gonna do that towards the end. So now I have a three cycle with this, just with, those, with that 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. If I hold it like this with the diamond in front of me, then moving it this way will bring this guy in. And I assume that moving it this way, if I do my 2R, how did I do that one like this? Across the top here. So if I go like, boom, like that, then it's gonna be the orange one. Yeah. So I suspect that that's gonna happen. All right, so what I have to remember is that if I want to move one in here, it's going to come from this guy. And it's going to come from here. Well, this piece is going to end up down here. This is going to end up over here. This is going to end up over here. So it's a nice little cycle around. If I want to put it here, it's going to come from this guy over here, and I'm going to move it up. So just for practice, 2R, 2U. 2R, 2U, and as predicted, the next thing that's going to happen is this will go here, this will go here, and this will go here. 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. Okay, so I have the blueprint 
on how I might be able to solve this. What I encourage you guys to do is go ahead and find the most complex, complicated puzzle you can and just start experimenting with commutators. And from those commutators, you can start building algorithms uh, to move pieces all around the puzzle. But that's, that's exactly what I do. It doesn't take uh, much more than that. You just find a commutator, see what piece you isolated in a certain layer, and then move that layer, um, then move that layer, reverse your commutator, and then move it back and see where things went. So now the question is, now that I have a blueprint on how to solve it, should I even do it? Is it even worth doing it? Well, the answer is yes, because you don't always consider all the possibilities. And there's the possibility, because we're reducing one puzzle to another, of having potential parity. Now, I suspect there will be no parity with this puzzle. And the reason is because it's really the same kind of layers here. One, two, three layer. One, two, three, four, five. So because they're the same number of layers, I would suspect there's not going to be a parity of reduction because you're not reducing from one kind to the next. So there's nothing else to do now except uh, scramble. Now that I have something of a blueprint on how to solve it, let's see if it actually works. And in this way, I can actually demonstrate this puzzle, which I like to do. There's always a feeling of jumping into the unknown, into the chaos. Now, this puzzle does jumble, and it jumbles in two layers. So with the Rua puzzle, the first step that I had was to get it out of the jumbled form. Now, jumbling in puzzles like this, it's really just an extra step. It doesn't really change the solve at all. I might get stuck in a jumble if I can't get out of it. But in many ways, it kind of delays the actual process of solving. So I could go ahead and jumble it. I probably will. But bear in mind, it's just kind of an extra step to get through. Which you could say, well, isn't that what scrambling is and solving is? And you're probably right. Uh, okay, so you can see that it's uh, laser printed, 3D printed. The movement is very smooth. It gets a little catchy in some areas, but I think just because of the complexity of the puzzle, that's understandable. All right, I hope we know what we're doing. I hope we know how to get this back, otherwise I could be staring at a puzzle unsolved. I've had puzzles like that, by the way. Puzzles that it just took me a long while to solve and just sat there in my collection scrambled, thinking that's probably how it's going to stay. Then you have a moment of insight or many moments of obsession where you can't tear yourself away from the puzzle until you find your way through. And I've always been able to find my way through. Maybe this will be an exception. Who knows? Okay, so here's a nice, beautiful looking scramble. It uh, actually has a nice chaotic look to it. Um, should we scramble some more? Okay, Oops. why don't we do this? Let's get this out of the way. And let's turn this here. Okay, so there it is, a scrambled master Rua cube. Now, if I were to do, this actually jumbles on two different layers. So if I were to go like this, say, and I started doing jumble moves like that, uh, well, it quickly jumbles to the point where you can't move it, but I, I, think, I think there's more that I could do. Because I could move it like this. Let's see if we can't separate these layers out for its jumbling potential. There we go. All right, so you can see that we're actually jumbling across different layers. And that's going to make things complicated. Now, i got to be careful because I don't want to force it. Like, this guy doesn't want to move because this is impeding it. So I could try to move this out of the way here. And now I can more freely move it. Okay. I don't know how much more actual jumbling I want to do. Because if I jumble wrong and I turn it in a way that could damage it, 
I may be in for a lot of frustration. Okay, so this jumbles pretty well, jumbling independently on both layers. Okay, so there it is, a fully jumbled, scrambled Master Rua. And now I'm very frightened. See what we can do with the solve.